This video is brought to you as a free public service courtesy of a three-year collaboration between Armory Center for the Arts and Pasadena Unified School District. Made possible by a grant from the U.S. Department of Education with additional support from the Clarence E. Heller Charitable Foundation. Artful Connections with Math has been formally evaluated by CREST, the National Center for Research on Evaluation, Standards, and Student Testing at the University of California, Los Angeles. For more Artful Connections with Math video lessons, or to learn more about professional development opportunities through Armory Center for the Arts, visit armoryarts.org math. Thank you. Welcome to Artful Connections with Math, Place Value Sculpture. How can we use sculpture to depict a number? This lesson's goal is for students to group objects in ones, tens, and hundreds in order to count to a three-digit number. They'll use color and length to visually differentiate between place values and create an abstract wire sculpture that depicts their three-digit number. Over the course of this lesson, which we have broken into three 90-minute sessions, your second grade students will be able to count to a given number in groups of ones, tens, and hundreds, say and write their number in word and expanded form, demonstrate beginning skill in the use of watercolor paint, and create a three-dimensional form. Visit armoryarts.org pv1 to download a PDF of this entire lesson plan. The lesson plan outlines the content standards addressed, plus key vocabulary words, rubrics, and also ideas for accommodations, variations, and extensions not covered in this video. For this lesson, you'll need aluminum wire, salad macaroni, scrap paper, watercolors and brushes, water cups, and four inch squares of insulation foam, like you would find at a housing supply store. For preparation, cut the insulation foam into squares. We will be using again four inch squares and cut the aluminum wire into different size lengths. We use 25 inch lengths, 12 inch lengths, and six inch lengths. Before we dive into the first lesson, let's think about the concept of value. Ask your students to explain what the word value means and ask them why place value is important in mathematics. Break the class into small cooperative groups. Tell students to take out their base 10 block manipulatives and create numbers. Start out with small numbers like 0 through 19. Walk around the room to check for understanding. Be very specific about the words you use. For example, ask them, how many ones are in the number 19? How many tens are in the number 19? Okay, how many ones are in the number 67? How many tens are in the number 67? Students need to understand that digits are symbols that represent a numerical amount or value. The base 10 system has 10 digits, zero through nine. The base 10 system is how we organize our numbers. We cannot have more than nine in each place value. If there are more than nine in any place value, we have to regroup. Have your students create three columns in their journals and label them hundreds, tens, and ones. Have three small pieces of paper available for each student. Review the meaning of the word digit. Ask your students to choose a digit and write one on each piece of paper. All three digits must be different and should not include zero. Tell your students to arrange their digits, read out the three digit number it creates, then write this number in both word form and expanded form in their math journals. Now, shuffle the digits and create a new three digit number. Have your students repeat this process again and again to understand that one digit can have different values depending on its place. Students should attempt to find all six numbers that their digit can create. Have students record these new numbers in their math journal, along with word form and expanded form as we did in the initial example. Before we begin, let's access prior knowledge with the students. Ask your students what a digit is and ask them what they know about place value. Now, show students a sample place value sculpture and tell them that it represents a number. Ask them if they can figure out what the number is. Ask them if they know what a system is. 
A system, of course, is a detailed way of doing things or solving problems. Mathematicians use systems all the time. But did you know artists often use systems to make art? Have each of your students choose one three-digit number from the place value charts they made during the pre-session math lesson. Give your students wires of three different lengths. In their journal's place value chart, ask them to assign a length to each place value. A long line under the hundreds column, a medium line under the tens column, and a short line under the ones column. Then, take the number of wires needed to represent the digits in each place value for the three digit number they chose. Demonstrate different ways to manipulate the thin aluminum wire into curved lines, angular lines, and other forms. Then, link wires together and create three-dimensional form. Now, have your students experiment with bending their wire to create different shapes and forms all on their own. This activity can also be done with pipe cleaners. Before we start the art activity, it's important to keep in mind that numbers higher than 199 will be very difficult for students to complete in just one session if they're working alone. For numbers greater than 199, it's a good idea to have students work in pairs or in groups. Now, let's make a place value sculpture that represents the three-digit number chosen by your students in the warm-up activity. For each digit in the hundreds place, use a long piece of wire. Bend a hook on one end of the wire so the macaroni doesn't fall off. String macaroni onto the wire in groups of 10. After 10 pieces of macaroni, poke a small piece of paper onto the wire. This will keep groups of 10 separated and will help your students keep track. When finished, bend another hook at the opposite end to keep the macaroni in place. Be careful not to bend the wire so much that you can't undo it, as you will need to unbend the wire later to stick it in the foam base. Repeat the step for as many hundreds as there are in the hundreds column. For each digit in the tens place, use a shorter piece of wire. Bend a hook at one end of this wire just like before. String 10 macaroni pieces onto the wire, then bend a hook at the opposite end to keep the macaroni in place. Repeat the step for as many tens as there are in the three digit number. For each digit in the ones place, use an even shorter piece of wire. Bend a hook on one end, place one piece of macaroni on the wire, and bend another hook. Repeat this step for as many ones as there are in the three digit number. Is everyone finished? Good. Ask your students to point to their hundreds, their tens, and their ones. Ask your class questions like this. Why do we need place value? How can you make two different numbers using the same digits? And how will you know which number is greater? On to session two, but first, let's access prior knowledge. Ask your class questions like, who can summarize what we did last week? How can you create a sculpture that represents a three-digit number? What do you know about the way artists and mathematicians use systems? Let's begin the lesson by first finishing up any macaroni stringing not completed during session one. If you have students struggling, they can work with a partner to create one number together. If students or groups finish early, they can create an even higher number by adding more beaded wires, or they can create another three-digit number by putting the same digits in a different order. Inside their math journals, ask your students to assign one color to each column of their place value chart. If you want, you can designate a place value color key for the whole class to use. This will make it easier for everyone to identify numbers in each sculpture, but it will limit the individuality of each student's work. Alternately, if your students understand basic color theory, you could give them guidelines like choose three warm colors or choose three cool colors or secondary or primary and so on. Before your students begin painting their macaroni strands, demonstrate how to hold and use a watercolor brush properly. It's important that your students understand that the more paint they use, the darker the color gets. And likewise, the more water they use, the lighter the color gets but don't use too much water because the macaroni might get soggy and fall apart. Your students can now paint their macaroni beads with long, smooth strokes up and down the full length of wire. 
Be sure to continually rotate the wire to access and paint all sides. Is everybody finished? Good. Have everyone place their macaroni beads on their desks, then walk around the classroom and write down what they think their classmates' numbers are. Ask your class questions like, how long do you think it could take to count to your number? Were you right? What did you learn about using watercolor? In this final session, we're going to make a sculpture from our macaroni strands and learn about David Smith, an important 20th century American sculptor who made art out of metals. But first, ask your class what do they know about sculpture? Show students David Smith's Star Cage sculpture and ask for several responses to the following questions. Keep track of responses so you can compare them later. What do you see? How would you describe the lines that you see? How would you describe the shapes and forms that you see in this sculpture? What materials do you think this sculpture is made of? How do you think this artist attached all the pieces together? The title of this sculpture is Star Cage. What ideas or experiences do you think David Smith is trying to communicate through his sculptures? Tell students about the life of artist David Smith. Visit armoryarts.org pv1 to download the full lesson plan which contains more information about the artist as well as the visuals you're looking at now. Once your students have explored different shapes for their sculpture, pass out the squares of insulation foam. This is the base for their sculptures. On their foam bases, tell your students to write out their three-digit number. On the bottom, they could also write out the number in standard, expanded, and word form too. Your students can now compose a sculpture by intertwining their macaroni wires to create three-dimensional form. If you want, you can require your students to create a particular three-dimensional form in order to connect to other content areas or subjects being studied in the classroom. Students who finish early can draw their sculpture in their journals. Now it's time for the art opening. Let's look at everyone's artwork. As your students walk around the classroom, looking at each other's place value sculpture, ask your students to write down each of their classmates' names, then write down what number they think each student's sculpture represents. Now, regroup your class and ask for several responses to the following questions. Keep track of responses so you can compare them later. What kind of lines do you see? What kind of forms do you see? Is there anything you saw in the art example that gave you ideas for your own artwork? The day after your students complete their place value sculptures, review what they've learned about place value. Ask your class, in what ways did the place value sculpture help explain or clarify place value as we understand it in mathematics? Answers can be brainstormed by the class as a whole and recorded in art journals with pictures. You can use the finished place value sculptures to do interactive math activities using three-digit numbers. For example, ask students to find who has the lowest number at the table, who has the greatest number at the table. Arrange all sculptures from least to greatest. Find out which sculpture has the most hundreds, the most tens, the most ones. Try addition and subtraction activities, too. What's the sum of your sculpture and your neighbor's sculpture? What's the difference? What's the sum of all the sculptures at your table? What's the sum of all the sculptures in the whole class? Thanks for joining us today. To download a PDF version of this entire lesson plan, visit armoryarts.org pv1. To make more artful connections with math, visit armoryarts.org slash math. Thank you.